Hello, and welcome to this advanced tutorial on advanced operators to be used with the keyword box, the social email extractor. If you're looking for a LinkedIn.com email extractor, this video is going to show you a very cool way of using advanced operators to scrape emails from LinkedIn. First thing I want to point out is everything we're going to talk about as far as operators is going to go into the keyword selection box right here. I'm not going to bother going through every single advanced operator function. There will be a link in the description that's going to bring you to a guide on the website where it, it, it's in plain English. I do want to point out a couple things though there's one specific if I can zoom in. there's one specific operator called the quotation operator now in, in for simplicity's sake all we're talking about is putting quotes around your keywords so in instances where you have two or more keywords and you want to look specifically for those two keywords side by side, include them with quotes. And let me give you an example. So if we have, there's a great example in the guide, but since we're doing a video here too. I'll display here as well. Now obviously those are the same keywords there, but the second one has quotes around it. So the first one might derive emails from websites that contain text such as, you know, she had beautiful red hair and uh, I threw my shoe across the street. So technically it's still got red and shoes as keywords, or shoes across the street. It has those two keywords within the page or the content of the page that we're scraping from, but if you want to be more specific, wrap quotes around your keywords and program will only extract emails from uh, the keywords that are surrounded within the quote. So it will not do, in the second instance, so if we just had red shoes and quotes, it would not do that first example that I was explaining, saying her hair is red, or her face was angry and red, and I went out to buy some blue shoes today. It would only find instances of red shoes side by side. So that is a I think it's a, that's an important one if you're trying to, to zero in on a specific niche. And that is called the quotation operator. Another important one that I want to point out is the hyphen or minus instance. So we can see here in the first table, salsa minus dance, and that's what you could use as a keyword in, in the keyword box, and what that would do is it would include the word salsa, but not the word dance. Uh, I'm going to briefly go over website restrictive operators as well. So there's actually two tables. So let me zoom out. Again, there's too many to go through here, but we do have all in anchor, in anchor, all in text, in text, all in title. If you're an SEO guy, if you do some web programming, then this language should be familiar familiar to you. The LinkedIn example that I'm going to demonstrate in a minute is going to verify how we can practically apply uh, the advanced keyword operators, the website restrictive operators, and in, in into the program, into social email extractor. But as an example, we've got in text. What is the description? The term must appear in the text of the page. Here's an example. In text planes. Search for pages that contain that contain the word planes. It's the very very going to the website and look at the table is uh, explains it in plain English. So if you do want to get very specific with your extractions, look for things that are in anchors and text and title tags. You can do that with Zoom. Now, let me show you how we can use LinkedIn and these operators. I'm just going to grab the example from the website that I created or the tutorial that I created, and show you how it's going to work. 
Now, initially, I was saying that LinkedIn does not allow for doesn't have any sort of public scraping um, within their website. But that isn't to say that users that have LinkedIn aren't on other places on the web, blogs, forums, posting comments, personal websites, everywhere else. You're not going to find a user that is a part of LinkedIn and that's their sole and only communication on the web. The problem is we don't want LinkedIn. We already know that LinkedIn does not provide email addresses. We can't scrape LinkedIn directly. So what I've done here is used website restrictive operators in conjunction with the other advanced operators to grab LinkedIn email addresses from users. Now first one here, my LinkedIn, and I'm, this is just me getting creative, I mean you can twist this and change this any way that you want, and you'll have to use the sort of same mentality when you're creating your search criteria if you've gone that far. We obviously have in our search criteria general interest search criteria, so we're not talking about SMTP providers, we're talking about that other aspect where we want to intelligently derive an email address from from a page where somebody might type in my email address is contact me by email at you know followed by their email address that's more or less similar here so in the text on the page we want to look for my LinkedIn after every instance here I've got minus LinkedIn.com so what I'm telling the program to do is specifically I don't know if disclude is a word, but specifically not include LinkedIn.com. We do not, we have no desire to go to LinkedIn.com. Here's another one. Contact me in title, LinkedIn, don't go to LinkedIn.com. Join me, you can see that in quotes, in title. So in the title tag of the, the page, it has to contain LinkedIn minus LinkedIn.com. You're going to have your keyword, your search criteria, your we can. That's another. That's another aspect. I forgot to mention about this. You can use this directly with Google. So this will scrape any website, any page, all over the map. And that's probably the first thing I would do with this. With this, uh, the nature of this scrape. Then I might target the main social ones: Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, and go from there. But this is an excellent example of how, uh, when you would use search what's called search engine scraping under the websites and I'll go into more details with using search engine scraping in the websites in the, in, in the future but this is a, a perfect example of where you would use Google just Google that's it keywords like this start scraping that's it uh, in title in text in text you could use in URL as well going back to the to the guide here or that referring back to the table or sorry, in, in Anchor, and that's that's pretty much it. These type of emails that you'll get, more cases than not, if it's got the word LinkedIn in the text or the title or the, the Anchor, and we've got a little sort of intelligent mind here to, to say, okay, contact me, by me and you know, join me. That seems to be the, the, the main phrase uh, amongst LinkedIn users that, I, that I've come across anyways. More cases than not, the email address that you're going to get is related to a LinkedIn user. Now, we can put another twist on this. If you're looking to focus in on a specific geographical area, I did have a client that wanted to do that. Throw the city name in there, too. You know, we could go, there's no reason why we couldn't go, you know, Los Angeles right here. Anyways, the point, uh, <laughs> the point should be there, that uh, we can disclude specific websites, we can use a little intelligence in our keywords in terms of how we're trying to derive an email address, similar to general interest in search criteria, and we can we can include specific operators to say to see, hey, look at, I want you to look for, you know, this keyword phrase within the text of any website that I scrape. Or I want you to look for this particular phrase within the uh, within the anchor, within the URL, uh, or the the title tag of of 
the pages that I scrape. This is a a very sort of open-ended personal preference as far as uh, scraping with, with respect to scraping C. There's a lot of different ways you can twist it. I think what I'm really looking forward to most, I haven't had time to really play with this, these, these operators. What I'm really looking forward to is hearing back from you and your experiences on using operators, any new twists that you found or advantages, and maybe you could do me a favor and post a comment here on the YouTube page so other users can see what, what we've done. Thank you for your time.